Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're going to take a quick look at a day ticket water that anybody can fish and allegedly, yes, they got catfish in there. Well stocked, small water, worth a go. Let's see how we get on. Well, I'm here at the fishery, right by the first lake, right on the edge of the road. It's, well, it's just a little top end corner here. Can't be any more than 40 yards long. I thought, you know what? Last time when I was here, I didn't catch any catfish at all. That was down on what I call the catfish pool. I saw a big bust here, and they said it's a really big catfish in here. But I come down looking, what I've actually seen is the weed growth is right touching the surface. And in amongst that, we're straining my eyes, I can see some really big, bad carp. I've got to give them a go first, and at least see if I can catch them. All I've got is one slice of dry bread. I'm either going to catch or I'm not, but they're just laying on the surface. To me, that is ideal for free lining a piece of crust or piece of slow sinking flake that just goes down and rests on the weed. I'm going to have to put some bait in for the catfish later, but I just can't really afford to walk past these carp. Not till I've either caught one or spooked one. Guys, got him hooked up. First carp. <laughs> that was what you call a totally awesome hunch, wasn't it? Just laying in amongst the weed, not floating crust, a slow sinking piece of flake. I'll tell you what, not far off nine, ten pounds. Let's get the camera around. That was, that makes up for the last time when the cat, catfish absolutely skunked me out. Mind you, I haven't got this one yet, have I? There we go, guys. That's about one of the fastest carp I think I've caught. Let's get him on hook quickly. Hook falls out. That's on a marvellous. And very long common this one. Almost sort of like a like a wild if it's gonna hold still like most commons don't. Well that was a bonus. There we go. That's what you call a good start. Slow sinking bread flake might be old school, but there's always a chance of catching something. Well obviously the action and splashing in that small confined area has uh, put the carp on alert. They've now disappeared off altogether from that particular wee bit, but I noticed down here. There's a sort of scum area. There's got to be fish in there. And I think I've seen one lay right on the back. Because a lot of the time the carp, when they're just sort of basking like that in amongst the weed, it's not a black shape, it's a sort of purple colour. That's what I'm looking for. Of course I've got polarising glasses. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you what I think is a fish over there. In fact, I know it's a fish. I just go in there on the edge of that weed bed. You can see the green scum. I dare say there's fish right underneath that. Um, I don't, I'm really here for the catfish, but I'd hate to miss out, miss out on a carp. And I think they're just over the back corner there, right in tight. Just on the edge of that scum, in there. That's where I think the carp are lying. Maybe I should bait up first for the catfish. I'll let this end settle down and then come back to it. I've got one slice of bread, so I haven't exactly got a lot to throw in. I think I'm going to put some of these uh, pellets out for attracting the catfish first and then come back to this spot. Guys, cart number two on. Slow sinking bread flake again. Plus, that's another fish about eight pounds, I guess. Right on the edge of the rushes. Rushes? Rushes. It's not a big fish, but it's going very, very well. There's an even bigger one I saw down there as well. See one small catfish caught up the other end, looked about seven pounds. So maybe there's fish on the feed. Quite how I'm gonna get away from these carp, it's beyond me. Well folks, it's hard to believe all these nooks and crannies along the edge of margins actually house fish. They do indeed, hold still, Mr. Common. The other fish I think I lost was a bigger mirror. There we go, it's picking up that side, a big jet coming. Hold still. There he is, guys. A monster, about five pounds, I guess. But, nice start to a session. Whether we see a catfish or not, remains to be seen. We're trying for catfish, which I'm going to use some cut up sections of mackerel, fresh mackerel that I caught in our boat, IC Drifter. Going to use them for shark bait, and I thought, you know what? 
I think they're going to be good for catfish because they're fresh. Um, I've got the swim next to me and I can also reach that from up here so I'm going to try and sort of divert tactics for two swims here as if I can get myself away from the carp. Two tips here. If like me you, you come for one species and you end up fishing for another and you've only got a couple of slices of bread take my tip if you want it to come on the surface don't break it with your fingers cut off the crust with a pair of scissors and that way you retain as much as the white bread most of the white bread as you can to use for hook bit baits because obviously you're going to be you know fairly limited to how much you use that way you can attract them with cutting up these pieces of crust which won't stay on the hook except on the surface by the way if you are using floating crust like this it's way better to cut them up neater with a pair of scissors to the hook size you want they're much much better like that now I can throw these in which I'm going to do throw them in and while I'm setting up for a catfish I keep looking up and down these two sections to see if anything does come up if it does come up I've got a piece of white bread flake left over that I can use I maybe have two slices so I've got to make them count as for the catfish, I've got some, I think these are four mil pellets, regular coarse pellets, a few larger, like that, trout pellets I guess those are, but into those pellets I've not damped them as you would do with ground bait with a feeder, I've actually poured over there some of my secret raptor oil, which nobody, they think they know what's in it, but it's one freshwater and one sea fish, two different DNAs, so it works in freshwater and it works in sea as well. So I've coated those with it, stirred it all around lightly, so each little pellet there has a light coating of raptor oil. I've no idea whether it's going to work on this occasion, but it's something I like using, a bit of raptor oil. Okay, I've chucked these in. I'm now going to scatter these crusts out. I just sit back, relax, and see if something comes up to take them. Two slices of bread have gone an awful long way. Four carp cooked. Third one's here, jammed up in wheat. Let's get it off. Never was two slices of bread so gratefully received. Now just cutting up those bits of crust, work perfectly, hook falls out. Nice golden common there. <laughs> Gonna go crazy. Carefully with him. Show him to the folks at YouTube. There he is, guys. Nice looking fish. Four hook, three caught, and I've at long last got my catfish lying out. With my catfish rod now truly out in the water, I just had to glance across and watch these pieces of floating crust drift tantalizingly past the open door of the carp that were hiding in amongst those reed beds. Occasionally, in the evenings, they will come out into the centre of the water, but a lot of the time, they will take those bits of floating crust right in tight to the rushes. It just gives me an option of fishing. If I catfish down this deep channel and then leaving out the rod for, if I want to know, sinking, you know, bread flake or floating crust. And way up in the distance, they got this sort of aeration system of paddles my God, I could use those for throwing my ground bait out. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I just can't walk away from surface feeding fish. I can't. But well, guys, the owner Mick came out first, so sorry for me seeing me snip down with scissors my two slices of bread. He's given me two or three more slices. Got him this time. Got the other line, but there's the fish. Don't worry, it's not a catfish, guys. The carp's run through my other line. But the rain stopped. It's not all bad. No catfish yet. But the carp definitely on the bite now that is a pretty fish I think you have to say not a big one look at that paddle of a tail fin and here comes a 747 
That's a land in the lake by the sound of it. Well, as you can doubtless hear by the microphone, the weather's turned for the worse. I did forecast it, the weather front, I thought we'd missed it, I thought it was really lucky. Well, I have been lucky after a fashion because I've had, I think, 11 carp hooked and I've landed eight. And that's just like a late afternoon session. It's now quarter to eight. I think I'm going to call it quits. I'm pretty wet. I'm due on a 36 hour carp one tomorrow night for a big carp with Mike. No catfish. I think this weather front probably made them a little bit twitchy. So I'll have to come back, have another go at it because I know they're in here. And the pool section that I'm in, I just spoke to the owner, he said, somebody's been broken up. Well, every few weeks I think it must be because there's been five or six people bust up a big fish in there. So they think there's a cat left over in this pool of 40 odd pounds. I'll give it a go. Had a great bit of carp fishing. If you're wanting for those two slices of bread, I probably would be on a blank today. But it shows you how you can adapt and change the least case. So, you know, catch something. Well, I think I'm going to call it quits, come back again, reload, rearmament, more ammo, give it another go. The cats don't have a chance, do they? Mind you, I haven't tried this current cake out there yet, it might be worth a go. Well, yes, I actually have caught fish on current cake before. The species was Trout, can you believe? That's right. Had a mess around, caught some trout on current K. So it does work. But I wanted to learn some more information, so I thought, do you know what? The more information you have, information with fishing is king. So, it's back to that guy with the moustache again. And I'm going to be trying to find out something about the catfish. They've got carp in these lakes, got a lot of different species, a couple of small lakes here, but I'm told it's pretty good. We're going to talk to Mick Delaney, the owner. He's going to give us a few tips, a bit of an insight into the stock of catfish he's got here and tips for you guys on how you might catch them. There's carp to 35 pounds. Uh, the average is four to six pounds. And there's plenty of them in all the lakes. There's three lakes. There's carp in each. Beginners. Try luncheon meat, sweet corn, or later in the day, try a piece of bread, flick bread on top. So you can float a fish, you can fish on a surface? Absolutely. There's a lot in the Anaconda too. They go up to near on 50 pounds. The biggest out I've seen is 42 pounds, but they are bigger, and there's quite a considerable amount of 30s coming out. What sort of numbers would you would you reckon you've got in this? Because it's quite a high concentration of cats in there, isn't it? There is. There's approximately 150 cats. Just in this one anaconda In the stretch. one anaconda too. They seem to respond to very hot days. Um, they're caught well in the night, but they're also caught through the day, providing it's very warm. They do get caught in the winter, but very slowly. It's not the best time for them. Now, for the car, it's all you wouldn't need a cast very far at all, would you? But they tell me you don't use, you don't need to use any resistance for um, catfish. Is that right? That it's got to be sort of almost free line or running ledger. It's better to be uh, the least resistant, the better. It can also be quite good to float fish. They seem to look up and uh, that's been catching them lately. So when you're saying float fish, does that mean the bait is actually suspended off the bottom because cats are generally as, as thought of as a bottom feeder, aren't they? No, suspended off the bottom. So and, what would you... Uh, that seems to be proving good results. And how far would you put them off the bottom? Like just a barely a foot off the bottom or something? In about that region, yes. Luncheon meat can be a good bait. Also a piece of mackerel or what seems to be the best one is a piece of bluey. Oh really? Do you stock all that stuff here? Yeah, we've got everything in the dead bait fridge in the shop. And for uh, if they want to ever go for the carp, you've got to, I can see plenty of baits on the shelves there. What sort of baits would you recommend for the carp? Uh, well, you can try boilie. It's hard on a boilie. 
you wait much longer for bites but luncheon meat can be good also prawns can be good um, and obviously the floating bread okay. is always a favourite later in the day. Now we all know the catfish are predators so presumably you've got quite a few uh, small fish in there as well that they can live on have you? Yes we, we regularly put small fish in for the predators to take. And not just the catfish I think you were telling me when I talked to you on the phone you've got some pike in there as well. Yeah there's pike in anaconda one and there's a good stock of uh, small roach and rudd in there for the cats um, and the pike to eat. At the moment we're re-landscaping the fishery to make it nicer and more accessible. We're putting new paths through so that when it's a muddy day you can walk down clearly to your swims and to renew the swims um, with a black top rather than a board or a concrete which can be slippery. Uh, we're not too far from the M4 so access is quite easy to get to us. Night fishing is available. Uh, if you ring you can book. Uh, if not, turn up and night, and night fish. Well thanks to Mick for that bit of an insight into his fishery but bad weather was forecast I had to get a rod out as fast as I could. Well I'm back again after all that rain. Carp were there and this is a totally different evening. Yes, rain forecast. Very muggy, very sticky. And this, I can see fish moving on the surface. So I'm gonna have a go at free lining with bread for the carp before we even take a look at the catfish. So I've seen one or two nice carp cruising around. I just feel before I set my stall out for the catfish, I ought to at least have a throw and try and get a carp. Might even get one on camera for you from the strike. They're just down on the edge of that weed, but I'm going to creep in. They're very, very cute. They know when you walk along this bank. I'm going to do it carefully. I'm just going to lower on it, and maybe one might come up. There's one right over those rushes there. I don't know if you see the... What you can actually see is sometimes you'll see the rushes get bumped, where the fish are right in tight to those rush beds. And that's what you're looking for. The stems actually start to twitch like this. There we go guys, it didn't take too long, a floating crust. Nice fish, just get that first fish out of the way. Got to stop playing with the carp and concentrate on trying to catch a catfish. Pretty dark colour on this one. Going well though. Oh look, he fell off the hook and jumped in the net at the same time. Doesn't get any better than that. There we go guys, nice little carp. Let's get it back. Now I'm gonna go farther down. I'm gonna start baiting up fishing for the catfish. Fingers crossed, we might even see one of those. At last, I forced myself, I forced myself to sit down and fish for catfish properly. It had to be done. I'm normally a lover of roving fishing, but I have got some screws, screwed my feet to the floor, and the rest is history. Okay, well after that carp, I've come down to a wider pool that's got a, a bed of rushes in the middle that they tell me is one of the better places to go for uh, the catfish. Uh, never fished here before, but I've got one bait just at the point. I'm just working on the carp principle. If there's some catfish in it's fish quite a bit and it's a small area, maybe they're pushed out towards that little island in the middle and they're going around tight to the rush beds, a bit like carp do, sort of thinking a bit carpy here, although it's catfish, I know. So I've put one pellet, big pellet, single pellet on a running ledger uh, and that uh, braid, hook link and everything, quite a long hook link, I suppose about two feet off the edge of the rushes there. But I've, I've not gone to the rushes, I've gone past them, so if I cast too far I can wind it back in and just drop it. So I'm real accurate and I've put in the old four mil pellets here, oh, there's a beef already. I've put in these four mil pellets. Good scattering of them to get the small fish around and then the big ones these big i guess they're like trout feed pellets there's one big trout feed pellets like that i've dropped those in about 12 10 12 14 something like that 
There'll be a wind drift there now, beeping my beeps, I think. On that side, and this side, I've gone really close to the margin, um, just the way it is. It's not a lot of scope here for long casting, obviously, very, very small. And that's what I'm trying to keep in tight. So I've got two very confined, tight baited areas. Hey ho, who knows? What do I know about it? What I know about catfishing can be written on the back of a postage stamp. It's nice to catch one English catfish of a halfway decent size, that would be nice. So how did I intend setting up to catch a catfish? Well, my only previous experience of catching a catfish had been over on the River Ebo where I caught them to... I think we had them up to 180 pounds. I think I got one about 122 pounds. And I got to thinking, from my previous trip at Finch Farm, I'd use mackerel, fish bait, nothing. Well, why wouldn't they take these things? The same sort of trout pellets, or similar to the ones I caught over on the Ebro. But I tried drilling these ones out with two different cordless drills, very gently, very carefully, with a nice fine drill bit, and I can't drill holes in them. I also couldn't find a band big enough to make them a banded pellet. But, because I'm an all-round fisherman, I used some of this stuff which we got on our website. I thought, I know I can't get bands, but I can make my own band with this elasticated bait thread from sea fishing. It comes in a 75 meter spool. It stretches a huge amount. There's three or four inches. It stretches a lot, and I worked out a way I could get this pellet onto my hook as a sort of hair rig. This is how I do it. Here's my main reel line. I'm just using a regular, what's called an Arsley bomb. I think it was invented by Dick Walker. It's a sliding running ledger. It goes down to a barrel swivel there, if you can see it. Now I've made up my own trace a bit longer because I didn't want to get a decent sized cat and it bites through. This is something it's a thick braid. I find it a thick braid and I like using thick braids. Do not like at all thin braids. I think it's called GR500. I use it for sea fishing. We've had a lot of good fish on it. Nice big hook there as well. But how to get the hook on that pellet? Right. I get hold of some of this elasticated bait thread. We use it as sea fishermen for uh, binding baits, binding squids, mackerel, a sand eel, bluey, all that sort of thing onto the hook and I thought this is so stretchy this bait elastic it's brilliant stuff and very very cheap got off about six or eight inches I'm going to try and do this in one now I leave a little tag end hanging there it's so simple I just wind it like this around and around the center say six or eight or ten times and then with the tag end I turn it over and I just do if you can see this, now somebody else might come up with a different way of doing this, a different knotting way, maybe making a loop. I've tried a half hitch, but I mean, I'm just doing this for this particular trip. I do one turn, pinch it up, because you can pull this stuff quite tight, this elastic. Two turns there, now you can see that, like that. As you can see, nice and tight. Then I just snip off carefully above the knot, the surplus. Now, here's my little secret tip. You've got there all the white of the elastic. You think, oh, in daylight, a fish might spook with that, but easily done, easily coloured down, just a black felt marker, round over the top. I mean, at night, it's not gonna make any difference at all, is it? There you are, all marked out with a felt pen. You cannot see where the white is, and all you do is put the bend of the hook just under the elastic, just like that, if you can see that there, it hangs perfectly. That's what I'm gonna give a try. It worked over on the Ebo. It's a miniaturized version of it. And it is elasticated on with elasticated thread. Let's get back out on the water, guys, and give it a go. Guys, hooked up at long last. It looks like it could be the elusive catfish. It is. It's 
not a monster, but it's something. There we go. Just in case we lose it. There he is. Oh, that was on that bait I showed you. If I can get him in. A huge clump of weed there. Get in. Totally awesome fishing. Does it again with a really nice catfish. Well, he's just literally hooked there, guys. There's a hook just hanging on the edge of the, in fact, it fell out. So this, for me, believe it or not, is a PB English catfish. And way bigger over in Spain. If he's gonna hold still, I don't know. He might hold still. Man, is he slippery. There you go. Catfish here, Finch Farm, worth fishing. Head on back one is a real churner, and it was just hooked, just nicked in the edge of the lip, bottom lip there. But, result. If you get a chance, you want to come here, Finch Farm, only small, but if you do want to get your first catfish, you know, guys, this could be the place. And there is my bait elastic still intact on the hook. Oh yeah, well, well pleased with that one guys, let's get him back. Guys, got a second fish on. Absolute monumental heap of weed here. Had to hit it and hold it. Could be a bigger fish. I can't tell you how big the piece of weed is. It's it's catast catastrophically big. There's a catfish. I don't know how I'm going to get the fish out. I'm just going to net the weed as well. I think it's a big fish. Try and get all the weed in the net so it doesn't tear the hook out. Just take a gamble. Do you know what, guys? I don't even know there's a fish in here. In here somewhere, folks, is a catfish. Absolutely, how lucky is I to get that out? But if you guys can see that in this light, yeah. Lucky, lucky, lucky. All that weed, absolutely huge amount of weed. There is the catfish. Show about the plane going over. Look. There he is, bigger than the last one. I think that is bigger. Well, there you go. Another nice little catfish. Good scrapper, I got it out of the weed, I feel I got lucky. It's another result for the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Why don't you give it a shot there? It's only a small water, but I tell you what, there's some really good fish in there. It's up to you to work out how to get them out. <laughs>